All right, well, um, we're going to go ahead and, and get started. And I think probably um, when I cue you, Michael, we'll, we'll set it up. Um, essentially, I'm going to uh, make the announcement and then tell you what it means for the city of Cheyenne. It's exciting. OK, here we go. You ready? Wow. This is a big deal. Cheyenne has been selected as a Bloomberg city for the mayor's challenge. We are only one of 35 cities in the entire country to be selected for this award. It's huge. And let me tell you why. Uh, shortly after taking office, uh, this challenge was, um, it came through on, a, on an email. And it uh, was a national challenge over four, excuse me, over 500 cities um, ended up applying for it. And again, being a new mayor, I uh, was taking a look at, at the challenge and um, what, it, what it was, was challenging mayors to address an issue in their community that they believe is urgent and important. And I ran on Fight the Blight. And I thought, how can we solve this issue in an innovative way? Because it's nothing new. Communities have been doing this for a long time, but not everybody gets it right, and not everybody uses innovation. And so I uh, did a quick submittal form and didn't hear back for several months. And then uh, in September, we were notified that um, our idea was selected, and we were awarded a coach to come and spend a day with us. Um, the coach uh, was from Colorado, came up and spent a day, and I assembled a team of really smart people from around the community. We spent an entire day talking about blight in our community and how we can really help what we term as the original city, which isn't just downtown, it's also the West Edge, and it's also the South Side, and really taking a look at how do we redevelop and invest in our community using the best and the brightest and the entrepreneurial spirit. And so... Um, Mind you, this is September, and while other cities were given months to work on this, we actually only had a few weeks. In fact, Robert Briggs, I stole him from Sheridan, it was his first week on the job. And he, together with Logan Ward, who was um, in our office at the time, brought them forward and uh, made our submission. And the submission will be available for everybody to see, but essentially what the project is called is Buildings with a Purpose. And through technology and a portal, what we're going to be doing is identifying vacant and underutilized properties in downtown West Edge and the South Side and pair that with entrepreneurs who are looking for a new way to do business. It's, it, it's about getting out of their garage. It's about getting out into the community. And it's about really um, solving issues that we have with redevelopment in the city of Cheyenne. We were awarded this because of the plan we put together. This is really about doing things differently. This is about thinking differently. We will be innovative. We will not place the same old constraints over our city. There are those that think that we've always, uh, we should be doing things the way that we always have, and there are those who intentionally thwart progress, but we will really move past these people. This award is a testament to hard work and innovative thinking. Again, this is one of the reasons why we brought Robert Briggs to Cheyenne, and we're so glad that he's here. We went after this award aggressively. We were chosen over 500-plus cities because of how hard we pursued this. And again, I put the smartest people in the room, and they came up with this really winning plan. And so with this plan, going forward, we're, again, one of um, 35 cities in the country. For those of you that have just joined us, we've been awarded $100,000. That's a big deal. We've been awarded $100,000 to test this plan. And so what we're going to be doing here in the next um, weeks and months is uh, we've been invited out to New York to join the other mayors and their teams uh, to learn how to really kind of refine our idea. We've been assigned a coach. Um, and uh, that coach, we actually had a, a web meeting with him last week, and he will be working with us to f uh, test again our um, our idea and then submit it going forward. But Michael, if you will, let's um, run the, uh, the website just to kind of introduce 
folks to the Mayor's Challenge and to show you kind of what good company we are in. The communities in Colorado that were selected are Fort Collins, Denver, and Boulder. In uh, Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska was selected. And so if you go on the Mayor's um, website challenge, you can look up and see what other communities are doing. For instance, on our Cheyenne page, it outlines our idea, putting property owners together with entrepreneurs. Um, other communities, uh, of course, we all know that climate change is a big issue for some, and uh, some um, really, I think, really innovative ideas for communities, but I really am excited with, with what we're going to be doing here with here in Cheyenne um, going forward. And so again, for Cheyenne, Wyoming to be selected as one of only 35 other cities in the entire country to compete in this is, is pretty remarkable for Cheyenne. I think it's really going to shine a spotlight on our community, and we're in really good company with the likes of our friends in the front range, Fort Collins, Denver, and Boulder. It shows that we can compete with the best of them. And I'm very excited about this, uh, this announcement. Again, this ties so well into um, the Governor's Initiative for Endow, really trying to expand the way that we think and we grow our communities and move forward to the future. So with that, I am happy to answer any questions. Yes. And Robert, excuse me, Robert, if you'll come up here too to explain part of the process to Robert Briggs and um, add, add to anything that I may have left off. Okay. Uh, but then I guess for both of you, you mentioned uh, pairing vacant buildings with entrepreneurs. How, would that, how does that work? I'll let you explain that idea. Well, basically, the first step is to really find those property owners that are willing to participate in the program and take advantage of the different resources that we'll bring to bear. And then what we'd like to do is uh, have a either an entrepreneurial challenge or otherwise help uh, select you know viable um, business ideas and plans. We're, we're really looking for um, people with business ideas that are already in progress, um, like the mayor mentioned, garage businesses that are looking for an area to expand into. They're looking for flexible space, and uh, that's really part of what this next phase of the project is about. Is about really putting together that uh, the online resources and also the um, community resources to help with that matching process. So when you ask that question, we have, we have ideas, but that's really what this next phase is about, is about putting it all together. Two things then. Uh, one would be, so I guess is it like free office space to folks with like the best ideas? It, it's not going to be in the sense of free, I think more in the terms of maybe a, like a, a small, small scale business incubators, flexible space that people can, can move into. This is, this is something that they're, they're not necessarily getting something for free, but what they're getting is a flexible space, an affordable space, and a, for them a competitive space to grow their business idea. So I guess it would still be providing you know, a place for folks who need all the space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, then you mentioned the on, like connecting them with the online resources. With, what are they? So one of the things that we've been looking at are a variety of different um, tools. We've been working. This dovetails in with work that we've been doing with the Downtown Development Authority for really a, a redevelopment toolkit. Um, for existing buildings and structures. So some of these resources include looking the, at the idea of building permit fee reductions for projects within the downtown, uh, access to our uh, Brownfield Revolving Loan Fund uh, that we have in place through the EPA, uh, looking at assistance with um, code and redevelopment of, the, uh, of those spaces in terms of the existing building code and um, the international building code and helping people uh, with technical resources, uh, so really it's a, it's a package of, of incentives and uh, support services for those looking to redevelop those those buildings in the original. I guess so. Is it two separate targets, like the entrepreneurs and also developers, or? So that's really where the magic is. Is it's about bringing people together. It's about helping people to find each other. Uh, you have building owners that are, that are interested in redeveloping their property. You have up-and-coming entrepreneurs that are looking for spaces to try their ideas. 
and you're looking at ways that the community can participate in the discussion. Yes. Okay. Other questions? I have one. Um, do you know, so looking at the list right now, it looks at most of these cities are big metropolized areas. What does, what does Cheyenne look like in those, especially size-wise, and what does this mean for the city? Taking a, a quick look this morning, we, um, we were not given a uh, the full picture until this morning. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll put this, keeping a secret since January 31st has been really tough. I'll just, I'd, I'll anecdotally share with, with how we found out. Robert and I were contacted by Bloomberg to um, ask some, uh, or answer some questions. They wanted to get back with us. And meanwhile, they had uh, been telling me that we're gonna be making our decision soon, so tweet, use social media. So I was tweeting like crazy. I was. I was forwarding tweets from Bloomberg and tweeting out there and, and taking pictures of all the great things that we've been doing and, and tagging Bloomberg to have them pay attention to us. And uh, at one point um, in mid-January, I, I tweeted out that Cheyenne's a champion city. And we had this phone conference with them and Robert and I brushed up on the, um, on the application and, and the funding portion of it. And we were ready to answer any questions and get on the line with them and, and they say, well, you, you know why we're calling. We said, well, just to maybe answer some questions. And they said, no, you're one of the 35 cities. And our jaws dropped and we were high-fiving and I was tearing up and they said, we thought that it had been leaked to you because you tweeted out that you were a champion city. And they were really upset. Some intern might have lost his job, we were afraid of. But um, I said, no, no, I was just putting it out there to the universe that we believe we're champion, you know, that we're a champion city. And so they were really tickled for us. And they said how much they loved the idea and how much they're really looking forward to, um, to working with us. And with that, um, they wouldn't tell us when they were going to be releasing everything. We had to wait until they did their release. Um, we found out yesterday that they were doing their release at 9 o'clock. Um, East Coast time, so at 7 o'clock I was online trying to figure out who the other cities are. I've not had a chance to fully review all of them, but you're right. We are probably, I would say, one of, one of the smallest the smallest cities. It was available to communities 30,000 and above, but we are in the likes of Elk Grove, California, obviously Denver, Boulder, Fort Collins, Lincoln, Nebraska, and then a whole slurry of um, uh, towns up and down the East Coast. I saw uh, Oklahoma City. So we are really, um, I, I think we're the, the pioneers, the entrepreneurial kind of uh, cowboys of, of this uh, challenge, if you will. And I really think that we have a hell of a good chance of being one of, um, one of the top five. The awards are top four? Top four. Um, so the top four um, each get a million dollars. And the winning person, the winning, uh, the winning person, the winning city, the winning community gets $5 million to then fully implement um, their plan. And so it's, it's, a progressive, it's a progressive thing. So we get to work with this coach through essentially July, August, and then we resubmit um, our fine-tuned uh, uh, application. And then we wait to hear if we're one of the four. So exciting for us. Yes. Um, so, Robert, you mentioned the work you guys uh, how this dovetails with the work you guys have done with the DEA. Do you guys have the, the map of kind of these vacant buildings uh, worked out yet? So we really, because it's it's buildings with a purpose, and we really want to work with building owners that are actively looking at redeveloping their property, who are looking for being matched with opportunities. Um, we have looked at buildings that we know are currently vacant in the original city, that they're underutilized, that they have low occupancy, just to demonstrate the potential that's there. But really, in this next phase, uh, in this, uh, this testing phase of the project, we're, we're going to want to very carefully match building owners that are excited about their properties, building owners who are wanting to go to the next step, um, with these entrepreneurial opportunities. So I guess I mean, it's, it's not necessarily all of downtown in the early original city. It's in the original city, any building that's vacant or underutilized has the potential to participate in this testing phase. Right, but, I mean, how many of you guys uh, you know, studied you know, specifically? They identified maybe 17? We identified you know, 17 Roughly? potential 
buildings roughly, and that was in that original city area. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are those mostly downtown? It, it really varied all through. We, I mean, we, we about half of the buildings that we identified were in close proximity to the depot. So we have buildings that are in that downtown core. We also have, uh, we've looked at some properties that are on the edges of those dis of, of that kind of study area. Um, was one of them the Heinz What was that? Was one of them the Heinz building? The Heinz. The Heinz. The Heinz building, I mean, it is a vacant building currently so I mean there's the possibility that uh, a proposal could be put together but what we're really looking for is buildings that can be fairly readily adapted into a flexible space for entrepreneurs and so at this testing phase we're not really looking at big huge lifts we're looking at, at projects that are fairly close. Okay and that's a that's not a specific set of that you guys have discussed, correct? Right? Not, not specific to the yeah. Heinz. <coughs> Uh, the broadband initiative, this really dovetails nicely into um, several of the conversations that we're having in Cheyenne, not only with broadband, but also blockchain and, um, and the Endow initiative as far as growing, um, growing businesses. Regarding uh, broadband, we certainly are um, watching and following the uh, initiative that's going through the legislature right now, uh, providing an incentive for um, underserved uh, areas. And some of these may certainly qualify for that. But obviously, we need high speed, affordable access to the internet just as much as we need to be able to hit the switch and have light or turn on the tap and have water. It's that extremely critical. So, yes, broadband is definitely going to be a part of this conversation. And then, I guess, why is Why was that? Right. Again, this comes back to really when I first took office, and not only Blight, but we were also launching the 150th birthday. And so I really got to thinking about where we were 150 years ago and where our city originally started, and that's areas now that really need to be redeveloped. We're doing a fine job of growing east and growing north, but really where we started 150 years ago was this west edge and this downtown in the south side. And I looked at it as part of the original city and that going into our 151st year now, this community was built on entrepreneurial spirit. And what better time right now than to relaunch and re-spark that excitement again and grow. So it sounds like we're kind of competing against other cities involved in this. I guess how much do you think that's going to be? And overall, what do you think that would mean to actually be awarded in one of those top four positions? What would that mean for the city of Cheyenne? It's a, it's a great competition. In fact, I'll share with you that um, I learned about Cheyenne on, as I mentioned, the 31st and the next day I was on a plane to Washington, D.C., where I am part of um, a women's governing group. And I've gotten to be really good friends with the mayor from Grand Rapids, Michigan, Mayor Rosalind Bliss. And she and I were talking together and um, she was also uh, competing in this. And she said, oh, she said, I haven't really heard yet. And I just kind of quietly thought, well, I have, and I can't tell you. <laughs> and so you're a loser, and I'm a winner. <laughs> and it is competitive. And actually, I was very pleased this morning to find out that Grand Rapids actually was awarded it. So Mayor Bliss and I will be um, competing in a, in a fun way. A lot of the projects are so, um, at least ours is so incredibly different, that what I really love is I think it's going to spark ideas um, of transferability. And that's really what um, the, winning, uh, the winning idea is going to be is how can it transfer from Grand Rapids, Michigan to Cheyenne or from Cheyenne to Elk Grove, California. And some of these other ideas are really innovative. Everything from, you know, auto driving cars, um, reducing um, emissions. Colorado's really focusing on um, their cases of asthma and trying to um, produce a, a healthier community and, and lowering their um, their, their pollution. So there are ideas that are um, different, but I think uh, definitely I'm, I'm competitive, so I'm in, I'm in it to win it. <clears throat> Other questions or comments? Randy, thank you, and, and certainly visit Cheyenne and 
all of our other folks that have been um, a part of a part of this conversation. Anything else? Well, thank you. I just think this is such exciting news um, for Cheyenne to be really um, recognized and in really good company with communities that are doing really innovative, um, not only national, but I'll, I'll tell you, last year this award was international. It was only brought back to the United States um, this year. So this is something that uh, certainly with Bloomberg Philanthropies um, has been going on for a few years now, um, not only nationally but internationally. And I'm very proud of Cheyenne and, and look forward to uh, lots of work ahead. Thank you.